is a real hot topic in public life. And that's health care. Uh-oh. Nobody get up and walk out. I'm going somewhere with this, I promise. There's huge debates over health care. Should it be single payer? Should it be privately funded? What on earth are we to do with health care? But in the middle of all this debate, one incredibly important detail, I would say it's really an etymological thing, it's a, a definition of a word, gets lost. And that's that we're calling it the wrong thing to begin with. What we call health care in this country is really not health care. It's sick care. Now, I know that's going to ruffle some feathers, but once again, I'm going somewhere with this, and we get up and walk out. If you think about everything that goes on within this system, it's all in response to disease. You come in with a presenting problem. As a matter of fact, if you come in without a presenting problem, they'll look at you a little funny and wonder what you're doing there. And they diagnose it and figure out what kind of medicines, what kind of interventions you might need. Even what we call preventative health care is really still disease focused. The underlying logic is let's catch one of these red things really early in its pathway so that it doesn't have disastrous consequences and we can deal with it sooner. But it's still sick care. Care that is truly health care. Care that's underlying logic is, let's figure out how to build up a robust and healthy body that is so powerful and resilient that disease is practically a non-issue. That conversation isn't even part of the system. Now don't get me wrong, there is a place for disease care. It's absolutely necessary at times. I'm not saying, let's boot it. But I am saying, let's call it what it is. Because to call that health care is deeply problematic. It creates a fatal mistake of the mind, at least in my opinion, a fatal mistake, which is to think that the absence of disease is synonymous with the presence of health. This isn't true, folks. These are two different things. The absence of disease may be a precondition for the presence of health, but it is most certainly not the same thing. Now this is problematic already when we're talking about health of the body. It's even more problematic when we're talking about health of the spirit. Somehow or another, it's really easy for us to drift into the mentality that the absence of a sickness of the spirit, and in the church we refer to that as sin, is synonymous with health of the spirit. But if we think that way, we are setting our sights far too low. Let's look at today's readings. In today's readings, it was all about the joy over the one sinner who repents. And at first we can think, oh, well, you know, this is somebody who had problematic behaviors, addictions, you know, they were a cursor, they were a drinker, whatever, and then they stopped, and heaven is just so joyful. But come on, folks, do you really think that the angels throw a party just over that? Perhaps they start to. But the real party is when there is a complete turnaround. When there's not just the absence of disease, but the presence, the restoration, or perhaps the growth for the first time of real spiritual health and power in a person. After all, look at what we just read from Paul. Think about him. His turnaround 
promise, I trust. A personal testimony is going to have to start with a confession. I got married for the wrong reason. I got married in my early 20s because I thought that in marriage and kind of going off with another person and starting a new life, I could escape some things in my existing life that I just felt were unbearable and unmanageable. There were things having to do with my family of origin and just kind of the way I was in the world at that time that I was looking for any way and any excuse to escape that was possible. And so I thought, my gosh, running off and getting married, that's the perfect way to do it, right? Well, I'll leave you to guess how well that worked out. At first, it was kind of subtle. But right from the get-go, it was a case of spiritual disease management. There was a disease in the situation, and the best I could hope for was to manage it, to keep it in check, to control its spread. And for several years, that kind of worked. But these things never worked forever. And the pressures just got stronger and stronger, and my own personal disease within the system got worse and worse. And I began thinking thoughts I had no business thinking. I began making some very bad choices. And then things finally came to a head. Well, for a lot of relationships, that can spell the end. For ours, however, it had exactly the opposite effect. It finally broke down my pattern of looking at this diseased soul that was mine, this diseased relationship that was my marriage, and just trying to purge it of its disease as if that were the highest possible goal, and instead say, forget it. I'm putting it all in God's hands, and let's see what God can do. Well, let me tell you what God can do. God can turn this heart of stone that didn't really know what the word love even into somebody who feels love like a burning flame. Somebody who finds sheer delight in getting to know and in building intimacy with spouse and children. These were words that were not even in my vocabulary 10 or 20 years ago. But God was able to do it. And now I understand the difference between the absence of disease presence of health. That was the moment that turned me from somebody who thought that the predation disease was the goal of my spiritual life into somebody who realized, no, it's actually the pursuit of health. But I could not have done it without the grace of God, and that experience told me that I can trust the grace of God. There was one thing in that whole experience I never gave up on. And that was the life of the faith. Sure, there were some times it was rote. There were some times that I had to force myself to do it. But I am convinced that the life of our faith, the sacraments, the prayers, the community, the gathering together at the church is the fuel from which God works miracles beyond what we've ever imagined possible. So I'm going to hold that out to you today. The goal of your spiritual life is not simply the absence of disease. It's the presence of health, perhaps the presence of a health that you don't yet even have the capacity to imagine, but somewhere in your mind exists the burning desire for it, because I believe God implanted it in all of us. And the good news is that desire is there to keep you striving for it keep you trying for it, to keep you persisting. And if you persist, my friends, if my own experience is any indication, and oh my gosh, I think when St. Paul said, of sinners I am the foremost, I said, sorry buddy, I think I, I, I did you one better on that front. It can happen to you. It can happen to us all. Perhaps it already has, and it will again. I think it happens more than one time in many lives. My friends, today I invite you to walk out of